You're listening to Power Talks with Beth Ann and Melody Cedarstrom in the morning where talk is real, truth is in the talk. There is power in truth and power talks. Welcome to Power Talks this morning. We welcome all of you. I'm Beth Ann and say good morning to my partner, Melody Cedarstrom, as we co-host you together empowering you with the truth. Good morning, Melody. Good morning, Beth. Good morning, listeners. And, you know, the truth is, sorry, I didn't mean to step on your words. Yeah, I'm used to it. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we're going to get letters. Everybody's going to tell me how rude I am, that I interrupt, and I don't mean to. If I could look in her eyes, but she's in one state and I'm in the other. (laughs) We're like hands across the, well, there's not a whole lot of water, but there's some water between us. Anyway, America between us. There is. There is. I like to say from reaching out from sea to shining sea, that's what we do with shortwave. Absolutely. And across the seas. <laughs> across the seas. This is heard worldwide. Absolutely. I used to get a lot of, when I did radio shows with Bob Chapman, I used to get tons of of uh, emails and calls from various places around the world. And it was always so interesting. So I know they're listening. And um, so it's always, I guess we should start including our listeners from overseas. We should. We yes. should. Well, the deplorables are still winning. <laughs> the uh, Roy Moore won, the, won uh, it's a primary, but he won the uh, Republican nomination for the, uh, was the uh, appointed uh, senator, which uh, Donald Trump was supporting, and I think he was supporting him. I don't know. I can't get in the man's head because he got some promises out of him to vote certain ways. Uh, But anyway, Judge Warren Moore won, and I think the president is pretty happy about that, and everybody else is really happy about it. It was uh, all over Twitter last night. (laughs) It was just all over Twitter about the winning, 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 and the American people the deplorables were tired of this mess in D.C. We're tired of being the ones taken advantage of, and we're going to start electing people that aren't a part of the establishment. Well, do you know why I think he is so important, why Mr. Moore is so, so important? And yesterday I talked about we can't change anything until we bring God back into this country. Absol- and yes. And he did a, a victory remark and in which he characteristically evoked faith in God. He Mm -hmm. says, together we can make America great. We can support the president. Don't let anybody in the press think that because Trump supported my opponent, I do not support him and support his agenda. As long as it's constitutional, as long as it advances our society, our culture, our country, I will be supported. But we have to return the knowledge of God and the Constitution of the United States to the United States Congress. Amen. And I got goosebumps just reading that. <laughs> you so. know, and I didn't see that. And I, uh, I was uh, going to tell the listeners, I took a little Mima time last night. I'm a grandmother uh, several times. Had a couple of grandchildren playing, uh, playing baseball last night. They lost both games. It was a doubleheader. And, uh, but they did well and uh, for the most part. But they're very, very young. But I w- took time out to be Mima last night. So when I got in, it was all over, and I was following Twitter, and I missed his remarks. And I, I'm sorry that I did, because that was awesome. That is, exactly that, was what, awesome. that is exactly what we need. And I have no doubt that he'll beat the Democrats nominee, Jones. He's 63. He's an attorney, U.S. attorney for the Northern District. He was appointed by Clinton, Bill Clinton. And his platform includes health care reform. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, environmental protection, civil rights, and criminal justice reform. So if that's the Democrats' uh, platform, well, you know, he's going to get stomped out uh, at the election. Uh, when is that election? Um, I guess November sometime. Yeah, I, so, I would say it I is. Don't, I don't up. know the exact date. But, uh, but this so, was a primary, but it, he won, and he won big. He didn't just he did. win. He won 54. He, he whooped him. <laughs> he got uh, 54.6%. Strange had 45.4%. Uh, if you want to break that down into votes, you had 262,000 votes for more and 218,000 votes. So seems yeah. a little light in votes. I did see a rerun of one of the news. Not even shows, a half yeah. a million people voted. You know, and that's sad. Or just five, about 500. 
Two sixty, two eighty. That's sad that they didn't yeah. get out. Four hundred and eighty. I still believe, even with all the corruption, that if the American people start standing up and taking charge, why do you think they? Why do you think they don't want uh, voter ID? Why do you think they don't want to look into voter fraud? And uh, I still believe in the vote. I still believe the American people have got to do their part. And that's our part, is to get out and vote. Um, sometimes I wonder about it, but I do believe that we need to do that. You know, I, I did see one rerun. What is the one population? Rerun. Go ahead. I'm just talking out loud. That's okay. <laughs> I did see a rerun of some of the news last night when I got in. I wanted to print a, per, a particular article on that I want to share here later that really got me upset. I was reading it as we were traveling from, it's 45 minutes over to where we watch the kids play baseball. Anyway, um, Carl Rove, of course, he was ba- backing the other guy. <laughs> and Carl Rove is anything but uh, non-establishment. He is about as uh, uh, big a rhino as they come. And uh, even he used the uh, remark that, uh, you know, that... Uh, um, Judge Roy Moore uh, actually whooped whooped him <laughs> whooped him good in the polls. So in the uh, in the election. So anyway, it was. Uh, I'm excited about that. I think that's a good thing, and I'm. It encourages me. But yes, you were going to say something about the population. We really need more people out voting. Yeah, in 2010, the population was estimated at almost five million people, and you got five in this area in, in Alabama. Uh huh. The state. Wow. Wow. The state of Alabama. And Population. only. And, and that's only 2010. And how many did you say voted? Uh, well, if you break it down to what the the report uh, was, five less than five hundred thousand. Wow. Wow. So you know what people want to know <laughs> how bad. to change things. That's how to change it. That's how to change it. And how Realize not to change it is you don't vote. Those are your ruby slippers, Dorothy's. <laughs> Click on them together and get to the polls and vote. Get to the... Well, and, and then I know people probably think, well, either word would have been fine. Well, you know what? Maybe not. You know, his words were powerful about bringing God back to the Constitution, the United right. States Congress. Look what That's he powerful. sacrificed. Look what he sacrificed over the Ten Commandments years ago. Yes. And um, so he took a stand. He did. So I, I'm always I've always been a Roy Moore fan. So I'm there. You know, some of them that were complaining about him earlier this week uh, were talking about how he defied a couple of federal judges, <laughs> and you can't have that. Well, you know, some of these federal judges are doing the wrong thing. Look what they've done to uh, uh, Donald Trump, to the president. Unconstitutional. So when did the American people start to take charge and say, you know, that doesn't go with the contract we signed with you? <laughs> anyway. Agreed. Anyway. I don't so. know. There's just something about Luther Strange. It kind of reminds me of a 007 James Bond. <laughs> you know, he should be Does? He should, Luther Strange. It just kind of reminds oh, me. Oh, you mean the name? The name, yeah. The name reminds me. <laughs> like he should be the, well, one, let's one see, of the bad Luther, guys in a James Luther was the bad guy on Superman. <laughs> and then you have Strange Love, Dr. Strange Love. Yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> kind of combine them together. Yeah. Well, I had a friend text me last night about um, uh, the, uh, said that the, uh, oh, how did he word it? Something about politics is a blood sport and the Democrats are bleeding. The liberals are bleeding. And I ask him, what color is their blood? (laughs) Because the swamp is full. But you and I both know that Democrats aren't the only ones in that swamp. No, not at all. It's the Republicans as well. And I um, think it's certainly a lot bigger than what anybody thinks the swamp is. But You know, I I believe that too. And I think the, uh, the article that we talked about, or maybe I didn't get to talk about it with uh, with you. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. From the uh, Secretary of Interior, talking about thirty percent of that department aren't people that would stand for the flag, mm-hmm. and uh, that's pretty sad if they're representing this nation and serving the people that they don't believe in this Constitution. That's what I see. They don't believe in our way of governing. They don't believe in the republic, and we know they don't. 
No, we went well, through mean, that I, yesterday. I get you can have your personal views, but I mean, when it comes to government, it should be strictly governed by the Constitution. Period. Absolutely. So, um, the Obamacare uh, that was dead. That's dead for life. So, yes. You know. So, and it was going to be dead no matter what. No I matter what. Went, no matter what. They were, and I mean the Republicans, they were not going to vote for it. Oh, they were going to make a pretense. Some of those that need to be reelected, they were going to vote. <laughs> but they were going to make sure that it didn't pass. And that's what they did. Uh, so they didn't take the vote. They just didn't even take the vote. But um, they're, extru- they're obstructionists, big or little. It wouldn't have mattered if it was a straight repeal or if it was a really good option which I don't think that it was, No, they weren't going to vote for it. They want the president to fail. And they don't seem to understand that the American people are watching them more than him. <laughs> well, I think also, too, they really do want it. This was all, de- this was all designed for a single-payer system. Yes. I mean, and again, folks, it's not that I'm negative on Trump, but I do remember the things that he said during his campaign. (laughs) And he says he wants everyone covered. The only way you're going to have everyone covered is if you're going to go to a single-payer system. And uh, I do believe that will be the main um, item, topic of discussion for the election in 2020. I think and right. if if not even sooner, but I I think it'll be 2020, and you know if but then again, where's the money coming from? I mean, you know if 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 the Obamacare, if the Affordable Care Act doesn't fail prior to 2020, um, and basically this gives the states unlimited funds that they can, they have no constraints. These are grants to the states. The, there's just there's no constraints on on, on how they spend it. I mean, folks, you know, this, it isn't Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act, the health system. Health care has to be dealt with, but just insurance companies and the insurance is not the way to address it. But this no, also gives us a bigger picture of truly the condition that our country is in. Mm. Well, it's in a mess, and it's not just there, but the, financially, uh, in, this country oh, yeah. is in a mess. Yes, absolutely. So, so this is going to collapse, and then we'll see where this. But it's all by design for single payer system. You know that way you they know. can control you. They can control your health care even more. You we know we. You know was it the uh, you know the death panels? Nobody talks about mm-hmm. the death panels anymore. About Affordable Care Act, Obamacare. They're there. They're real. They get to choose who lives, who dies, who gets things. We, I wanted to talk about the DNA testing uh, because, you know, last week it was mentioned that the DNA testing was great for medications, you know, because sometimes your medications can kill you if you look at some of the side effects. However, my big question is there's a big push for everyone to get DNA testing. And I guess if you just go get a regular blood test, yeah, they probably slap you in the DNA and slap you up there and do it even without your consent. I get that. But I am not knowingly <laughs> going to give them my DNA. Well, you know, and they, they make it look so so enticing, these uh, commercials. And, and, you know, I would love to know my heritage bloodline. I would too, know? but I'm not going to uh, give, them my, gonna give them, them my DNA because I don't have any assurance that they're not going to turn that over to somebody. Well, you know they and, are. Uh, oh, I hear music. <laughs> I had a call yesterday afternoon about that, and they were sw- swearing that they were taking this DNA I I would think it would be for other purposes, but Absolutely. they can set you up for a crime anywhere. That's true. Anyway, we uh, are going into a break. We want to discuss how some of the American people have been fooled, and we keep going down that track. And, and Melody had some a really interesting story that we want to talk about. And your calls are welcome at 717-300-1218. 717-300-1218. You're listening to Power Talks, and we believe the power is in you. And we will be right back. Hear it first on FirstAmendmentRadio.com and FirstAmendmentRadio.net. Gold and silver is tremendously undervalued. 
global demand vastly exceeds mine supply by more than 60% annually. There is little in the financial world more certain than a coming explosion in the prices of gold and silver. The U.S. dollar continues to lose value and respect as the world's reserve currency. Our nation faces challenges on many fronts, and a day doesn't pass without another economist bringing forth warnings of impending economic calamity. There has never been a better time than right now to acquire physical gold and silver. Discount Gold and Silver Trading was founded on the principles of truth and honesty. We believe in providing a quality product, quality service, and most importantly, competitive pricing. We provide all forms of precious metals, including American gold, silver, platinum, and rare investment and circulated coins. Silver bars, rounds, and 90% silver bags are on hand for the silver investor. Gold self-directed IRAs are available. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, that's 1-800-375-4188. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. When it comes to prophecy today, much of the evangelical Christian world has their eyes on Israel, waiting and watching to see when the third temple will begin to be built. The plans are drawn. The Jewish people are eager Most evangelical Christians today believe that the rapture will happen before the third temple is built. Hi, I'm Michael Yuji. I was taught that Daniel's 70th week was in the future. Is that really what the Bible teaches? Have we searched the scriptures and found this to be true? Why is it so important for a reestablished Israel to build a third temple in Jerusalem? Is it necessary to build a temple on the same location already occupied by the Dome of the Rock? Is it necessary for sacrifices to take place in the temple on Temple Mount? Is there really a rapture followed by seven years of tribulation? What is the New Testament temple? Can we identify history and prophecy? Who is the first beast in Revelation chapter 13? Who are the seven kings in Revelation 17? I have asked all these questions and I have found Nicholas Arthur's new book, When the Third Temple is Built, answers all these questions and more using scripture to interpret scripture. The Bible says that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. Nicholas shows us in his new book, When the Third Temple is Built, how the Bible interprets prophecy and not man's private interpretation. Visit crosstheborder.org, C-R-O-S-S, crosstheborder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. Years ahead of the dominant media, FirstAmendmentRadio.com and FirstAmendmentRadio.net. And we have returned to listening to Power Talks. Your calls are welcome today at 717-300-1218. We have Melody powered up today. She is powered up. (laughs) 717-300-1218. I came across this news report I, to me, it, it just created all kinds of questions. And you know what? Listeners might think, and Beth, you might think, ah, oh, you know what? What's the big deal on this? But I think in the world where everybody is saying, oh, fake news, fake news, fake news, and and I see it in my business, in the, in the gold and silver markets. I see so many misleading reports and these websites that I know they're not telling the truth but yet their followers are significant and I know they're not telling the truth I know they're lying (laughs) and but who do they believe do they believe me that I'm trying to provide the truth or do they believe those that sensationalize and provide a little bit of truth with the fake news and so we hear all kinds of fake news fake news the internet has really created and I think again Beth it's just we're in a time where everything is as I say like an ant's nest that's been you know stirred up everybody's like just going everywhere and everything and I think that's a good description you know and this is part of it there was a on September 18th there was a gentleman by the name of Paul Horner he was found dead in his bed and he was a leading purveyor of fake news uh, in the 2016 presidential election. And he's died. He was 38. 
Maricopa County Medical mm. Examiner performed an autopsy, showed there was no forms of or no signs of foul play. He had a history of prescription drug abuse, and the scene at the evidence suggests that this could be an accidental overdose. Now, this report is a little lengthy, but I'm going to, and then I have questions. Um, some of his stories that he was known for writing, uh, these false stories and uh, Internet hoaxes that often went viral on Facebook, uh, they included a story falsely claiming Barack Obama was gay and a radical Muslim. Another saying protesters were being paid thousands of dollars to demonstrate at Donald Trump's campaign rallies. Horner took on greater prominence during the election with false stories that were widely shared on social media during the race between, of course, Trump and Clinton. In an interview with the Washington Post in 2016, Horner said he thought Trump won the White House because of him. Horner said Trump supporters didn't fact check his stories before posting them. J.J., Horner's brother, said Paul considered his work satire and explained that his brother's unique eye for hoaxes and hypocrisy at a young age uh, gave him the, uh, the ability to work in the Internet world. Mm-hmm. So I think that was a lot of the genius behind his work. Casey said uh, the toxology reports is going to be released. Let me see what else is there. Um, Horner said while his brother was pigeonholed as a Trump supporter and a member of the Trump family, shared one of his stories, he was always transparent about his views, and it was obvious that he wasn't. I think he just wanted to, I think he just wanted people to think for themselves and be credible for their actions, his brother said. Read more, get more involved instead of just blindly sharing things. So this really brings up a lot of questions, I think. You know, it, it does bring up a lot of questions. And, and if you're on Facebook or Twitter or any of these, even the emails you get, you know, I got an email a few weeks ago and I, you know, you never know whether it's true or not, but it was about Hunt, the owner of uh, the Kansas City Chiefs. And he apparently had said he was going to fire anybody who took a knee, but that's not true. He didn't say that. And, um, you know, so that one was fake. And you jump on them because you want to believe them. And I had something that escalated on my Facebook page. And, and I hesitated before I put it there because I kind of figured, well, I'll just let other people decide. But it was a story about something that apparently Hillary Clinton had said off the air when she was uh, being interviewed by Maddow. <laughs> and it was a, it was a video. Now, apparently she had said, according to this, she apparently had said something derogatory about the people in Florida that lived in trailers. Well, I posted the video that was just a news person that do, that does the, uh, the the blogs, the video blogs and stuff on it's you know on uh, on the internet. Well, I noticed last week all of a sudden the views. <laughs> People who actually saw something on your on your Facebook page, and this is the shows, jumped up to over ten thousand people, and it's usually between three and six or seven, depends week to week. And I thought, what on earth? Well, I never did check it out. Well, I figured it was Facebook because they want you to pay to boost an ad, and I wasn't going to pay to boost the ads, and and. Uh, um, so I was looking at all the comments and everything, and I, and I stumbled, forgot all about that video that I had posted. It had over 9,000-some views and comments all over the place on it because people will go to that stuff and look at it. Now, whether it was fake or not, I don't know. But that's exactly the kind of stories that you're talking about with this man, Paul. Well, the thing of it is people make a lot of money. He was making ten thousand dollars a month because it's all about job. click. How does he do because that? it was all about click share. It was all about click clicking. Every time you click, you make money with your advertisements and so forth and whatnot. He was mm-hmm. making ten thousand dollars a month, and he posts. He has various websites. And that's what I think. I think a lot of my gold dealers, some of these websites, they're all the same guy. And I just think they create. You anybody could create a website. Anybody can make it credible. Everybody can, you know, it's not difficult. And I, we have been so, uh, and, and we and we start believing things. We make decisions on some of the things that we believe that are true. Now, 
my question is, if, if this was an accidental overdose, it took six days for the announcement of his death. That's a long That's time. Interesting. So he certainly died in a fashion to continue his fake story reputation. And you can already see the, 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 the numerous theories that will be created. Was he murdered or, or were his stories really fake? And, and all his interviews, some of, were some of them fake? Usually to be credible, you have to include some truth in with those fake stories to make it credible and believable. So, big question. I, you know, that's what I see. Why did that's it take so long to announce That's interesting. Death? That's very interesting, but but I thought the video that I posted is just proof that we will follow just about anything. If, if it's something we, that um, we want to believe. What happens when you, all of a sudden, you find out it's not true? We feel kind do of we foolish. Just, do we just keep, uh, you know... <laughs> believing it? just, oh, you know, shame on me, you know, or do we keep believing it? Or do you, how, do, how does it... Does it affect a person? And well, I'm just I think not talking I... about one video. I'm talking about years of being conditioned by fake news, not knowing that it's fake. Or, and well, or only hearing part of the story. There may be one piece of it that's true, but when you put it all together, then it makes sense. And otherwise, it might just that one little piece would be, oh my gosh. Um, I'm just I'm just saying that I don't I don't have anything in particular in mind, but uh, yeah, we'll follow just about anything. It seems like as well that we are sheeple, we are sheeple. <laughs> you know, yeah, look at what. Also, and then I think about the, you know, we're also a group of people who think we're not sheep. <laughs> All right, we want to call everybody else the sheep. Yeah. So <laughs> we're just sheep. sheep. I'm not the sheep. We're, we're just sheep in different clothing. We're just, we're, we're still, are we still sheep? Yes, I think we are. And I, I mean, think some of us try to think farther outside the box and try to look at the bigger picture. I like to quote, uh, um, and actually. Yeah, when I, you have one guy making a fake story, you get various, you know, various news cycles picking up the same cycle. And then you yeah. do your investigation to see if it's real or not, and you're looking at these other news cycles. It's like, well, you know, you know, you know, that one said, that one said, that one said, that one. So I, I guess it's true. Well, it's not the case. That, that might not be the case. Well, and how about finding out which one is the truth? And I think how, how does somebody like you and I? We don't have reporters in our offices. We don't have any help. We don't have any anybody that's searching and trying to figure these things out or making phone calls to see if this is true or that's true. So how does the average American person figure out what is really in the truth of what's being said on mainstream media, alternative media, internet media? I mean, because there's a ton of internet media. There's a I difference mean a ton between of it. there's a difference between facts and stories. Yes. And I do believe in fundamentals. This is why, yeah, I, I'm not a sensationalistic type person. I, I don't, you know, I could sit here and spin gold and silver where my dog Ruby would call me and buy gold and silver. <laughs> you know, but I'm not I that see her little pause dialer. <laughs> Would you like that? Hey, mom. So, <laughs> but I don't do that because that is part of the. the I, I believe the the creation and making stories believable mm. is sometimes the sensationalism that they create. I stick to the fundamentals. Hey, I know the Federal Reserve was created in in, in 1930. I know they confiscated gold in, gold in 1933. I see the collapses and the booms that have been created and the decisions and, and the laws that were uh, created and how it's affected our money and how we have a fiat currency. That's fact. And that's, yeah. why gold is, that's, and that's why you buy gold and silver. You know, based on the facts, and, and those those facts are is the truth. The fundamentals of, of something is, is the truth of something, and um, I'm sure that can't work in all situations. But um, and I think too, with all this fake news and so forth, maybe in a way it is good because maybe it is breaking down the wall of the illusion that has been created. By both sides, 
You know, it, it does make us now begin to think what is real and what isn't. And you have to use a little common sense in some of these things. And if it can't be proved, I can't believe it or promote it. And, But maybe this is a good thing. Maybe it is the breaking down of the illusion that people have fallen into for so long. And maybe that's why we're like those ants that are being stirred up in the anthill. You know, I mean, well, I don't I, know. I, I just... <laughs> Well, I think that a lot of things that have taken place with um, this last election, I think we were seeing a sifting, or at least we were waking up to who these people really are, even some of them that I liked. Mm -hmm. I didn't like them when they were running for president. Mm -hmm. I didn't like their behavior. I didn't like how they were willing to do anything to win or to beat one man. And... President Donald Trump, I don't know if he and I would be friends in another world, you know, because that we're totally different, not just that he's rich and I'm poor. We're totally different personalities. But when I was watching how everyone hated him and knowing that all of these people in the past had used him, I saw the hypocrisy of them, how they were willing, both sides, Democrat and Republican. They have all gone to the Donald Trump man, the billionaire, for money, for their campaigns, for their agendas, for this, for that, in the past. And now all of a sudden they hate this man with a passion. And I was scratching my head trying to figure this out. And like I said, it was kind of an awakening, of, at least on certain, I'm not going to mention their names, but certain people that were running for president that I did like and I'm thinking oh my gosh why are you behaving like that and um, it's it was an awakening as far as just I already knew the DC occupiers were corrupt but some of them that I thought weren't I was now thinking maybe they are <laughs> maybe they're not as honest as I thought they were they're just making noise and I still haven't sorted all of that out. That being said, all these distractions, which I believe are distractions, whether it's the NFL, whether it's uh, uh, the media making a big deal out of when Donald Trump said, you know, both sides were violent and they just went ballistic because the both sides were violent. Well, when my kids got in a fight. I would say it takes two to make a fight. Mm -hmm. I and, agree. Uh, you know, it, you know, you just can't help but see why are they saying things like that? Why are they doing things like that? What is it they're trying to hide from the American people? Not from Donald Trump, from the American people. And you can't help but watch all, I don't see how you can, how you can help but watch all that's taking place, all the obstructionists, Democrats and Republicans, after they ran to repeal Obamacare, and they're not going to do it, come H and high water. They're not going to do it. And uh, you just have to wonder, wow, they're really not different after all. I used to say you could take the Republicans and Democrats and put them all in a paper bag, shake it up, and throw it out like dice, and you wouldn't know the difference. Mm -hmm. And I think we're seeing that through some of these things that are taking place are not taking place. They're not, they're going to fight building that wall. They're going to fight tax reform. They're going to fight everything. They're going to make it look like they're really doing it for the people. But they're going to fight it every step of the way. But what I said for a very long time, that, yeah, you're right. They're going to fight it all, the, all every step of the way. But there's no money. I mean, mm -hmm. that, well, why, you think, oh, they, you know, it, that's why... Affordable Care Act. I hate calling it Obama, but that's a you know it's we so easily it's the coin it. care. I know it's the Phrase. affordable care, the old affordable <laughs> well, care. Well, it's not Act. affordable I guess either. Changed, I guess they changed the you know with the Republicans in there, but uh, um, there's no money. This country's bankrupt. And what can they do? I mean, they're coming out with a tax plan today, and they're going to make it a Republican and a Democrat deal. You know, they can't get along, and this is a bipartisan, blah, 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 blah. But I saw a report this morning where in 10 years, uh, revenues are going to drop, was it $5 trillion? 
and mm. and we're collecting we're collecting we're collecting record revenues now with supposedly the the best economy the lowest employment so you bring more jobs back into this country supposedly is going to offset the, the revenues how do the numbers work now stop and think about that a second how do the numbers work they know that if we're doing well there's more tax dollars yet they're willing to stand up and fight more for um, illegal aliens coming across the border and to having jobs or heightening the visas that bring in um, immigrants to take jobs um, think about that yeah, why, but how many why better... would they not why would they not want to do what's actually going to flourish this nation which should be flourishing them but they're flourishing even when we're not <laughs> how can i mean record you know, they're they're collecting over a trillion dollars in revenue now as a per quarter i i i can't re i don't know if that's annually or say that number again over a trillion dollars i can't remember if that's quarterly okay. or or if it's annually i it must be quarterly and i'm thinking how how many more trillions can they actually collect? I don't care how many jobs you bring back. You, know, you bring back a half a million jobs, you think that's going to generate another trillion plus dollars in revenue? <laughs> I mean, how much more revenue can you get out of the American people and they still live? Right. You know, with costs continuing to rise. I mean, it, does, it isn't even going to make sense. And they're saying revenue is going to drop with the, 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 the cuts that they present today. Uh, five trillion dollars in ten years. How does that all work? How does that all work when you have what three hundred billion dollars to probably half a billion dollars with these three hurricanes that we've just experienced? I mean, the cost. You've got bonds out of Puerto Rico. Yesterday, Mr. Trump came out and said, "Well, we're going to pay a hundred percent of Puerto Rico's uh, costs. I don't know, road building, cleaning, and so forth." But how much money? How much money in there do you think is going to help pay for those bonds? And those bonds supposedly are backed with some collateral, which means land to Puerto Rico. So now you have wealthy Goldman Sachs. You know, well, you know, we might have to let our bonds fail, but you know what? I now have oceanfront property that uh, you know. Oh, gee, what can I do with that? Yeah. <laughs> I said last week, now's a good time to be buying property in Puerto Rico. And mm. um, so, I don't know. It, it, to me, it always comes back to the dollar. And, and it's the same thing when you look at fake news. You're hearing the fake news about this economy. You're hearing the fake news about, and um, it's based on truth. It's based on facts that you can, legislation. That's well, you know, when, so. uh, when President Barack Obama was president, the mainstream media was telling us how, how everything was doing good. Jobs were cl coming in and everything was doing good. And and um, and uh, the alternative news on Fox and some of the others, they were saying how bad it was. It's just horrible. We don't have jobs. This is doing this. The dollar's dropping. Da, 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 da. And now we have a different president. And what do we see? We see the exact same thing on the opposite side. Mainstream media is talking about how bad the economy is dropping and this is going bad and da 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 da. And you have the alternative news, you know, talking about how good it's been that he's brought in X amount of jobs already and the stock market's going up and it's just wonderful and good. And I'm thinking, I'm looking out here. Now there are some const I don't have a whole lot to base on in this little town, but there are there there is some construction that has kicked up some, not a whole lot, but the building has kicked up some. Uh, but I don't see a lot of jobs that have been added, not in this area. Of course, I'm in a rural area, but we have factories. We have cities around us. We have Kansas City. We have St. Louis. They're all about two and a half hours from here in Springfield. Um, well, I'm right by the, uh, the state capitol. There's lots of jobs there, but they're all state jobs. They're not jobs of production. Sorry to all my state workers, friends, but they're not jobs that produce anything. Mm -hmm. They just do a job. Right. And uh, so I really haven't seen, I know that they say that jobs have uh, have increased, and I'm, I'm certain that they have in certain areas. I know oh, some, of the coal, some of the coal plants have started back up, and some of that has gone on. And, and maybe we'll see things 
you know, switch. I don't know, but it's like you said, we have so much catching up to do. There's no way we can catch it up. Isn't that the jobs haven't been created? The jobs that were created are part-time jobs, and they're low-wage jobs. Mm-hmm. That's the problem, you know. And with the uh, Obamacare, uh, companies started cutting back their employees, cutting back their hours, so people aren't even working, you know, a 40-hour week, I, and they had to keep lowering the hours to make these companies pay for the health care and uh, because they kept lowering the employees' hours. Well, you know what? If uh, Obamacare says you have to work 37 hours, we're only going to let you work 35. That way we don't have to pay for your health care. When Obamacare came in, well, now it's 32 hours you have to work Oh dear, cut well, down you to know 29. what? I think we're going to yeah, cut you down to 29. <laughs> we're going to buy a robot. <laughs> <laughs> and that's next. That's next. You know, I got a grandkid over here. I can just have do this job. <laughs> they could do the data entry for you. Yeah, it's it's definitely um, not been an encourager of hours and jobs, and and it has um, it harmed the starting up of new businesses and. Um, you know, it's just, it goes on and on, but it, the bottom line is exactly what you said. It's the dollar. We can't catch up with the debt, and the dollar is worthless anyway. Yeah, and, you know, the stimulus, how much, you know, the only reason we have what we're doing is because of the stimulus that was given to this country. And, you know, and even now, nobody talks about it, but when the feds, when their bonds mature, they're taking that money and buying more bonds, so that's still a stimulus. You know, so it's still creating debt. For, I mean, it's just... I don't like that word. <laughs> that infuriated me when President Bush did that. Well, we're going we're gonna to give you money back. We're going to give you this money. Okay, first of all, it was ours. In the first place, it was ours. And they were going to give us this, this money. So the, I think the average amount that the American citizens got was $600. Per household, I think, was what it was. And, and stimulate. We want you to get out there and spend and stimulate the economy. <laughs> like, don't tell me this. I mean, what a, what a pretense and slap in the face. What a farce that was to tell everyone we're going to give you this stimulus package and uh, acted like they were really doing something for us. It just, it, it was like fingernails on a chalkboard. I hear the music. Mm-hmm. We're going into a break. Well, I know you want to join us on this conversation. You guys are just chomping at the bit. I know you are. 717-300-1218. 717-300-1218. You know, Americans waking up. I believe that, Melody. I really do. And I think people like you and I with Power Talk, CSC Talk Radio, and Financial Survivor, they're helping. We're helping people look at the big picture. That's Power Talks. And we will be right back. Hear it first on FirstAmendmentRadio.com and FirstAmendmentRadio.net. Since the beginning of time, kings have sought it, nations have fought for it, it has been traded, it has been borrowed, it has been purchased, it has been stolen, there's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity, invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free... 1-800-375-4188. The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment Rights Media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on Internet or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. 
If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for Missionary Radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. Then, when you subscribe, we will send you the last quarterly MP3 CD of that program immediately and continue to do so with each new quarter. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host, cause, and anywhere else the Spirit may lead you. Do all to the glory of our God and Creator, for His holy nation, the only kingdom that will last forever. Thank you for listening. Hear it first on FirstAmendmentRadio.com and FirstAmendmentRadio.net. And we have returned. You're listening to Power Talks. We're in the final segment of today's show. Your calls are welcome at 717-300-1218. I don't know where you want to go next. Um, home. You know, they want to impeach <laughs> Donald Trump. What did you say? Home. I want to go <laughs> You home. are home. <laughs> no, I'm not. Um, they want to impeach uh, Donald Trump, and they've been saying this since... Um, since he was, um, before he was inaugurated, because <laughs> they were mad at all the deplorables, you have to understand, their hate for him is you. They don't like that you elected an outsider. You messed up their flow. Both the Republicans and the Democrats, they had a, a racket going, and that racket right now is being threatened, not by Donald Trump, but by you, by you, we the people. So this is this representative, Al Green, and he wants to impeach Donald Trump over what he said in Alabama using uh, the language that was rather colorful about whoever takes a knee, whoever takes a knee on the field needs to be fired. And of course, he said it a little bit more colorful than I did. And I'm thinking, you know, you can't impeach somebody because they cursed. You can't impeach somebody <laughs> for what they said, because you just don't like them. They have to have actually done something. And so I looked it up rather quickly today. I looked it up. And if it's just about the foul language, Perez, who's the uh, chair of the DNC, I have never heard him speak without vulgarity coming out of his mouth, and much worse than what Donald Trump said, in, President Donald Trump said in his speech in Alabama. Not defending his vulgarity. I'm just saying, let's look here at both sides of this story. But in order to impeach a president, it says the federal level, Article 2 of the United States Constitution says in Section 4, the president or vice president and all civil officers of the United States, that I love that all, of the United States, shall be removed from office on impeachment for any conviction of treason, bribery, or other high crimes, and it adds misdemeanors. How many of these elected officials have misdemeanors against them or felonies against them and should be impeached, but they don't ever look at one another, do they, Melody? No. You know. But they've been screaming impeachment for every little thing this president does, but, you know, I didn't approve of his language. But that's not an impeachable, impeachable offense. But anyway, you know, that's just we, it. you know, it, I just sometimes <laughs> I just get speechless when it comes to um, they, they loosely throw the term impeachment here, impeachment there, and treason here, and then you know, even though there is a lot of treasonous acts being done in in Washington and so forth, um, none of them sticks because. They're just throwing these words around, and I wish they'd pay a little more particular interest to, um, you know, the, the true things in this country, and they should be thrown out. And how do these people continue to get reelected is still my question. And I guess because just like in Alabama, when you have almost 5 million people and only a half a million show up to vote, that's how. 
And exactly. that's, you know, but uh, and I, I, I get so upset when I hear people say, well, my vote just doesn't count anymore. <sighs> your vote Do counts. it anyway. Yes. <laughs> Do get it up. anyway. Get up off your duff. Because, you know, you can sit on the sofa and complain all you want. I said, we can go to the coffee shop and we can complain all we want. And maybe that's what I'm doing on the air. Maybe I'm just as guilty. Because I don't, I do vote. (laughs) But I don't have time to do some of the other things that maybe I should be doing to be active. But I'm trying to encourage others to do that. And I'm not trying to be a hypocrite in that. I don't have anybody else here to help me. I'm the janitor. I'm the secretary. I'm the person who fetches the mail. I'm the one who tries to juggle and try to figure out how to pay the bills each month. You do the same thing. You know, we are struggling and fighting just like every... That's, that's what makes us unique, Melody. We are the people that are listening to us. We are living their lives. Oh, we may have a different occupation, but we're living the same lives, stru- doing the same struggles, going through the same things, these other comment and I'm not putting down getting wealthy. I would like to see that I could, I would like to get wealthy doing what I'm doing. <laughs> I would hope that I would be, you know, generous if that happened. But, you know, you listen to these other commentators and you know how much they're getting paid. And you think, how is it worth that much money <laughs> to sit and talk? And I know, I know that they work hard. I know that they do. I'm not putting that down at all. But they're making millions and millions of dollars. The American people are struggling. Those that we're supposed to be relying on, whether it's for entertainment or news, are so far above us, they can't even, they can't even relate to the lives we live. Um, I, I, we're just about out of time. And I don't want to necessarily go back on this NF <clears throat> on the NFL, but I'm going to if you don't mind. I just want to say, and you're absolutely correct. Nothing irritates me more, whether it be a politician or whether it be a, a TV anchor or a radio announcer, is when they say, "You people, the people of the we United the people. States," <laughs> and, and it's like they're excluding themselves, like they're not part of it. They're I hope they're, I they're don't just say saying. That. No, because they think of themselves as an elite, and they are not part of it. Uh, because you're right, they make so much wealth, and you know they're they're a level above everybody else. And you know it's it just always irritated me too. But go ahead, back to the football. Well, the football. This is something that I was reading, and I think I knew about it, but I just never gave it a thought. You know, sometimes you just don't stop and think about things. And we're just about out of time, but. The NFL, their stadiums, they use taxpayer dollars through subsidies to build the stadiums or to renovate the stadiums. In fact, that's why one of the, sta- one of the uh, football teams left St. Louis, Missouri, because the St. Louis wouldn't, wouldn't vote to build another stadium. Now, think about this. You build the stadium, you the taxpayers, us the taxpayers, we build the stadiums, whether it's through direct dollars or subsidies, and look what they look how they treat you. Now I don't care if you're a Trumpster or a never Trumpster. Look how they treat you because if you pay taxes and you're you're bowing to them, <laughs> so to speak, you are the deplorables. Whether you voted for Trump or not. You need to understand that. Fourteen million dollars, fourteen billion dollars in revenue they made in 2016 was heavily subsidized by local, state, and federal money based on dubious claims about stimulating the economy in that area, whatever area it would have been. And this thing goes on. This article goes on, and this is a very reliable article. It's a very reliable source. It's the Heritage Foundation with the Daily Signal. Uh, they are a conservative group. I don't always agree with everything that they write, that their writers say, but this one is right. And Jarrett, Jarrett Stepman, I, I do like his stuff quite a bit, but he uh, he just laid it out here. And some of these, uh, some of this uh, information came from other sources that he was using that are also reliable. Um, just think tanks that do some of this research. But here we go. You can not hardly afford to go to one of these stadiums and watch a ball game, whether it's a baseball game or a football game or a basketball. 
The, the average American person has to sacrifice to go and have this type of entertainment. Not only that, they search your purses. They search your person when you go in because don't dare you take a bottle of water when they can sell you one for six bucks. You cannot take a bottle of water. They're going to tell you that's for your safety. This was years ago, long before 9-11. We went to a Royals ball game, and I had a diaper bag because I had a baby. I had a couple of bottles in there, and I had a bottle of water in there. They made me throw my bottle of water out. Going into the stadium, which we could barely afford, taking a family of five children in, seven, and we were in, we were in the, uh, the nosebleed section. We were in the cheap section. Uh, so your tickets are expensive. Just to get in is expensive. To buy anything there is expensive. And they dare disrespect all Americans by taking a knee against the national anthem when they're using you to be wealthy. Billionaires and millionaires taking a knee at the deplorables and saying, we don't care what you think. So the deplorables made the NFL, and the deplorables can break the NFL, and I believe that's what we're seeing. Uh, one, one network, where I hear the music, we're just about out of time. One network is giving refunds to those who got the NFL uh, station, or whatever you call it, uh, and want to have a refund. They're giving them refunds. That's how bad it's getting, Melody. So... I hear music. We're out of time. Melody is going to join me here coming up on CSC Talk Radio. If you stay tuned, you'll you'll hear us a little bit more. Are you there, Melody? <laughs> yes, I am. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. All right. We're out of time, and the, the music is playing. I thought you might want to say goodbye. All right. Thank you, listeners, for joining us. And until tomorrow, God bless. Be safe. God bless. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. When it comes to prophecy today, much of the evangelical Christian world has their eyes on Israel, waiting and watching to see when the third temple will begin to be built. The plans are drawn. The Jewish people are eager. Most evangelical Christians today believe that the rapture will happen before the third temple is built. Hi, I'm Michael Eugene. I was taught that Daniel's 70th week was in the future. Is that really what the Bible teaches? Have we searched the scriptures and found this to be true? Why is it so important for a reestablished Israel to build a third temple in Jerusalem? Is it necessary to build a temple on the same location already occupied by the Dome of the Rock? Is it necessary for sacrifices to take place in the temple on Temple Mount? Is there really a rapture followed by seven years of tribulation? What is the New Testament temple? Can we identify history and prophecy? Who is the first beast in Revelation chapter 13? Who are the seven kings in Revelation 17? I have asked all these questions and I have found Nicholas Arthur's new book, When the Third Temple is Built, answers all these questions and more using scripture to interpret scripture. The Bible says that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. Nicholas shows us in his new book, When the Third Temple is Built, how the Bible interprets prophecy and not man's private interpretation. Visit crosstheborder.org, C-R-O-S-S, crosstheborder.org to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. The book of Revelation says, The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is at the very heart of FirstAmendmentRadio.com. In that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Available for your Apple, Android device and smartphone absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today so you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The Prophecy Reality News app. Get it now. 
Since the beginning of time, kings have sought it, nations have fought for it, it has been traded, it has been borrowed, it has been purchased, it has been stolen, there's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity, invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188.